Stanford, and uh, now we'll hear from the Wheat Growers Association and Mr. Jokum, please. Thank you, Chair and committee members. I'm grateful for the opportunity to appear before this committee. My name is Gunther Jochum. I farm about 20 minutes west of Winnipeg with my wife and daughter. I'm also president of the Wheat Growers Association. We are a volunteer-based farm advocacy organization dedicated to developing ag policy solutions that strengthen the profitability and sustainability of farming and the agricultural industry. The average age of Canadian producers is over 55 years old, and over 98% of those farms are owned and operated by Canadian farm families. We are very concerned about the changes to the capital gains inclusion rate announced through budget 2024. While we acknowledge the proposed increase to the lifetime capital gains exemption to 1.25 million, which recognizes the accelerating appreciation of farmland values, we are concerned, however, that the introduction of a two-thirds inclusion rate on capital gains makes it more expensive for young farmers like my daughter, Fiona, to take over the family farm. As farmers retire over the next decade, many of these farms will be transferred to the next generation. While this will secure retirement for thousands of farmers, the transfer will also incur capital gains. Under the proposed changes, nearly every grain farm across Canada will be impacted by a two-thirds capital gains inclusion rate. This is because the 1.25 million lifetime capital gains exemption is too low to account for rapidly appreciating farm values, and many will have already expended their exemption by the time they sell their farm meaning most farms will have gains subject to the two-thirds inclusion rate. Furthermore, most Canadian grain farms are structured as corporations and do not benefit from the 50% inclusion rate for the first 250,000 of capital gains. When I consulted my tax accountants, he estimated that I will pay 30% more taxes. These numbers are staggering. And if the capital gains inclusion rate is increased for family farms, it will impose a substantial tax burden on new farmers such as my daughter Fiona at the beginning of their careers. Budget 2024 emphasized fairness for every generation, and yet the proposed changes to capital gains exacerbate farm transfer challenges and make these transfers more expensive for the next generation of young farmers. Furthermore, Budget 2024 described that differences in taxation rates between income earned from wages, capital gains, and dividends currently favor the wealthiest among us. This policy inadvertently targets farmers who produce food to meet domestic and global demand, and as small businesses that are family-run, they do not represent the wealthiest among us. General succession planning is a cornerstone in the agri-food sector, particularly farming. Currently, less than 1% of Canadians are involved in farming, a percentage that is likely to decrease over time. By making farming financially less attractive, the number of farms will continue to dwindle, leading to greater consolidation and fewer family-owned farms. Farmers are known for their ingenuity and entrepreneurial spirit, and, may, and many have accumulated significant assets. However, farmers are often asset-rich and cash-poor meaning they possess valuable assets such as farmland, quota, equipment, and livestock, but lack liquid cash. This becomes especially challenging with changes to the capital gains taxes. Often farmers sell a portion of their land or assets to facilitate intergenerational farm transfer, and they might realize a substantial capital gain, forcing them into difficult financial positions requiring, to, requiring them to find ways to generate the necessary funds to meet fiscal obligations. Increased capital gains taxes could complicate estate planning and succession as the tax burden on asset transfers may be higher, which could lead to more family farms being sold off or broken up to pay taxes. All this flies in the face of what Budget 2024 calls fairness for every generation. Thank you for your consideration. Well, thank you, Mr. Yoakum. And now uh, 
members, witnesses, we're moving into members' uh, questions uh, time and uh, in the first round of questions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jokum, um, thank you for farming. My grandfather farmed from 1926 to 1960, was a grain farmer on the border of Alberta and Saskatchewan. Thank you for growing our country's food. I want to talk to you a little bit about family farms. Now, my understanding is that in this budget, it would increase the lifetime capital gains exemption on the sale of family farms from $1 million to $1.25 million. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. And I understand that also when you sell a farm, you also can benefit from the principal residence uh, deduction, meaning that you can uh, you can eliminate entirely from capital gains your home and 1.24 acres in addition, so that's completely tax-free. Are you aware of that, sir? Yes, I am. However, it uh, doesn't always work that way in uh, family farm transfer, and that's what I'm really concerned about. Uh, our daughter came back from working in the ag industry, and she we're in a process of family farm transfer, and it, uh, th this new tax will add a lot of uh, tax. Uh, That's what I'm trying to explore. Now, um, I know that when we put assets in joint ownership, then that property passes. Uh, well, it, it simply would avoid tax and disposition at all. Could you put your farm, could you add your daughter's name as a joint owner to the farm and avoid that disposition entirely? That I'm not sure of. Uh, I would have to check that out with my accountant. Okay. And, and we're, we're working on that. Uh, I am a farmer, not a tax uh, lawyer. Of course, no, I, I appreciate that. Did, I, I did call him before uh, this meeting here today, and he said, absolutely, it will increase uh, my tax burden going forward. Um, so just two other quick questions. Um, I understand, and uh, we'll get into this with another witness on stacking. If you were passing your farm to three children, each of those children could add cumulatively their capital gains exemptions. Were you aware of that, sir? You, you may maybe only have the one daughter, is that right? No, we have four daughters, but so if you uh, were it's to only the one daughter that's interested uh -huh. in farming. Right, but if you were to transfer your farm to four of your children, are you aware that those four people can cumulatively stack their uh, capital gains exemptions? So in this case, it would be a it total of $5 million of ex lifetime exemption. Right. So I was not aware of that, however, uh, spreading it out to non-farming uh, uh, family members, like the other kids, is a pretty surefire way of destroying the family farm. Yeah, because, no, I'm not, I'm not uh, suggesting that. I'm, I'm not suggesting your personal situation. I'm talking about just the, the structure of it. Finally, I don't know if you're aware, but when capital gains uh, were imposed in this country or brought in in this country in 1972, the rate was 50%. In 1988, the Mulroney Conservative government raised it to 66.6%, and in 1990, they raised it again to 75%. Today, this proposal would actually um, uh, bring it back to the 50% uh, rate that still was in place in 1972, but raise to 66.6% .6 only on that amount over $250,000. Are you suggesting, sir, that we should go back to the 1972 rates in this country? I'm suggesting that uh, this budget is not fair to generational, uh, uh, to, to, to multi-generational farms. And uh, my farm is my retirement. Uh, just like Mrs. Stefanik said, uh, I, I don't have a fancy RSP because I invested everything into my farm. And now I get penalized for doing that versus you yourself or or some of my other kids who have uh, very good jobs, pay into an RSP, their employer pays into an RSP, and yet they do not uh, face this tax increase. Well, sir, you will be left with 33% uh, of your capital gain is still tax-free. Uh, so you'll still retain that benefit. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Stanford, can you please explain the stacking uh, uh, the way that uh, stacking might work under this uh, this new provision. I'll, I'll give an example. Um, many people are concerned how this might affect um, a second property, rental property, a second home. Um, in the case of couples where secondary residence is 50% owned by each spouse, each of them is entitled to $250,000 exemption, making a $500,000 exemption. Um, 
Same thing with the farm. Can, can you explain that to us? Well, since the uh, capital gains on the individual personal tax return uh, is, de is defined according to each individual, not according to a family or a household, that's how our tax system works, then each individual uh, uh, claiming a capital gains uh, will be ac able to access all of those uh, exemptions and thresholds. So that includes the 1.25 million lifetime exemption uh, for uh, farms and small business could go to each member of a family. And then the annual $250,000 threshold before you um, move into the 66% inclusion rate could also be claimed by each member of family. So a good example would be a, a cottage. We hear a lot about cottage owners uh, and, and a cottage that's in the family. Well, if it is in the family uh, and uh, owned jointly, then that $250,000 threshold could apply each year uh, for each individual in the family. On top of that, we of course have a bit of an income averaging system in our capital gains system, uh, the capital gains reserve, which uh, generally will allow you to average out a, a one time capital gains over five years, or in the case of uh, passing <coughs> property to your children, even longer. So the stackability across members of a family and the potential for averaging over multiple years means that uh, most people with a, a second home uh, are gonna be able, I think, to avoid the 66% inclusion rate entirely and continue to pay capital gains at the existing 50% rate. Thank you, MP Davies. That's the time. Members, uh, we're moving into our second round of questions. Times are a little bit different in this round, and we're starting with MP Lawrence for five minutes. Thank you. Um, and I'll just start by just correcting a little bit of um, incorrect tax advice that Mr. Davies offered from the floor here. Um, number one, simply by putting in a property. Point of order, I, I wasn't giving tax advice, yeah. just to be clear. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Davies. Um, Simply by putting something in joint tenancy does not avoid or putting someone joint name. It actually triggers the tax at that point. Um, the and in fact stacking is would work for his the next generation, which means his kids could multiply the capital gains exemption, but he cannot unless his wife also owns the corporation. So, just to, I, I would I would strongly advise that Mr. Davies maybe perhaps review the tax law before he starts making commentary. Um, now. I'm also struck by the fact that we have a series of individuals who get their money either from government or are tenured or otherwise who are making pronouncements about the lives of business owners. And we actually have business owners here who directly contradict what they've said. Uh, and I think anyone at home would be well aware of, of the facts here. We've heard uh, from a tenured professor that, no, this won't discourage business investment. We've heard from business uh, owners that, in fact, it will reduce tenure or that it will reduce uh, the, their investment in businesses. This is costing people jobs. This is costing people real lives. This is hurting people financially. Uh, Mr. Joachim, my first questions will be for you, sir. Um, you, talked, uh, you talked a little bit about uh, the, inf the effect of the, of the tax changes. I want to go back a little bit. First of all, if you don't mind sharing me, does your family farm uh, pay carbon tax? Yes, we do. We pay. Uh, there are certain segments that are exempt, but uh, there is a lot of hidden carbon tax that's paid. Uh, about 75 to 85 percent of what I produce is exported and it is transported on the Canadian rail system, either CP or CN. And they uh, pay carbon tax on the fuel that they use and they do pass it on to the farmer. Uh, the same with the grain elevators that receive our grain uh, and anything they use within their system and adds cost, uh, that would be the carbon tax, is again passed on to the farmer. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of hidden carbon tax that we pay that is not a line item within our bookkeeping, but it is there. So and now uh, uh, APAS did a great study out of Saskatchewan in, uh, as far as how much carbon tax we pay, and it's staggering. Thank you very much. And so now this Liberal government is adding insult to injury to farmers. So in addition to the, the thousands of dollars, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars of carbon tax, they're now increasing the capital gains inclusion. Um, and uh, the capital gains inclusion from your the advice that you've received from your tax professionals um, is that it will uh, increase your tax burden and make it more difficult to pass the family farm onto your, onto your daughter. Is that your understanding? 
That is correct. Uh, my farm is my retirement, uh, and a, a, a family transfer, farm transfer, is is a very difficult uh, job to do to to satisfy everyone's need within the family. Uh, my parents moved from Germany to Canada in 1980. We had a very small farm in Germany. We bought a smaller than average size farm here in Manitoba back in 1980. And I came uh, back from university to the farm in 1984. And on the advice of my accountant, uh, I did pay a little bit into RSPs, but he said, you know, you're better off investing in your farm because you want to grow it where the farm is financial, but financially viable to support your your family. And so we have grown it over the last 44 years uh, into a larger than average size farm, which supports three households at the moment. Uh, we have done that when, when I was married, we lived for 12 years in a house, had very little furniture, uh, made lots of sacrifices to grow the farm. And we grew the farm not in order to sell it at the end of my farming career and live in luxury with the millions. No, we grew Thank the you, farm. Thank you, sir. Thank so you, thank you. I'm just running out of time. I'm, I'm running out of time. And I, just right. I would like to just uh, seek 